Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the post fight press conference. We are still on site here at Pachanga Resort and Casino. For those joining us in the live stream, we welcome you as well to Temecula, California. The second show here in Bellator's ninth season is a wrap. We'll uh, have questions here just momentarily for those members of the press that are joining us. If you have a question after opening comments, we'll open it up to you here on the floor. With the, fi the fighters for tonight's show behind us, uh, let's get set for opening comments. And for those opening remarks, we'll turn it over to the CEO and the uh, chairman of Bellator MMA, Mr. Bjorn Rebney. Uh, I'd like to start off and thank our partners here at Pachanga Resort Casino and our partners at Spike. This place is 45 minutes from the front door of our office. Um, the people here at Pachanga always work with us to pack this place, and it's just a great place to come to. It's an intimate setting, um, reminiscent of the early days of Bellator, and it's just awesome. We'll be doing a lot more shows here. This is just a, a wickedly great place for us to do shows, and uh, we love working with these guys. So. And a big thank you to our partners at Spike. <clears throat> 100 million homes tonight. We'll see how many people watch in the next couple of days. But um, do an amazing job promoting this brand and putting these spectacularly talented fighters on national television to 100 million homes. So in our first uh, fight of the night, Baby Joe, congratulations. We were just talking outside. Um, for a smaller 145-pounder, he has got absolute dynamite in both hands. Spectacular power. Um, had an incredible knockout for us in the first fight that he fought for us and then showed you again tonight. Um, against Andrew Fisher. Uh, great performance, spectacular win. Congratulations on making your way to the semis. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, you know the opportunity to put me in this tournament, uh, the toughest tournament in sports that does tested it today. Um, it was a great first round with uh, Andrew Fisher. Uh, it's a blessing to come out of victorious over a, a really game fighter. Um, you know, I'd like to see uh, Andrew in, in the future of Bellator, so, you know, great fight, big up to you, buddy. Um, you know, the journey doesn't end here, you know, going uh, going next month uh, on the 11th of October in Kansas, and, uh, you know, I got my <laughs> my next guy right here, he's a great guy, we've been talking, so, you know, Justin, let's let's heal up, man, and, you know, I got some inks and dinks to, to, to heal up and put some ice on it, so let's do that and uh, let's put on a good show in Kansas, baby. Might need a translator for me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. You know, I, I think I got off to a really slow start, uh, probably my career really. But I'll be back next time and take a bit from the beginning next time as well. <laughs> I thank you, Joe. He's a great person, a great fighter. Yeah. The gentleman sitting down here, Justin Wilcox. Uh, we called him what eight days ago. I think it was seven days ago. All right, seven days ago. I, I, I had six days <laughs> And you were at what, 260? Yeah. Yeah. 260. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's amazing what How do you cut them faith, good wrestling and some tricky submissions will do for a man, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, ACOP is joking. an amazing striker, oh. <laughs> and you saw that on display at the beginning of this fight. His kicks and his punches yeah. are spectacular. Still, even to cut like He's one of the most minutes. entertaining fighters we've got in the organization. And uh, Justin, that was just, that's a huge performance with great heart. Unbelievable performance. It's great to have you here. Um, it was a, a very odd situation getting you in. Shambhala Chambalaya, for those of you who didn't know, was supposed to fight here tonight. His father uh, had a stroke. He had to go back to Russia to be with him. Um, but you stepped up, and man, what heart, great performance. It'd be amazing to see what you can do on a month's notice as opposed to seven days. So congratulations wow. on a great one. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, i just like to uh, thank you guys for um, giving me the great opportunity. You know, uh, Bob, Cook, Bob Cook calls me. And uh, and when, when Bob Cook calls you and he asks you how's your weight, you know you know something's up. And I'm like I'm like I don't know. Let's check. I'm about to train. And uh, so I stepped on the scale, 168. So one sixty. When I fight in the tournament, I'm like, oh, that's a great opportunity. Let's do it. You know. And um, 
So I just give all the glory to God. You know, he, he walked me through this. You know, six days of cut, what, 22 pounds. You know, first time uh -huh. dropped down to 46. Good and for him. A, a, a great, great fighter like a cop. I mean, you know, it was just, it was, it was just a, a privilege. I just, uh, I'm glad the fans got to see a great fight. Thank you. Во-первых, хотел бы сказать спасибо Берну за то, что, несмотря на то, что, на что э, дает шансы выступать на этом турнире, потому что это очень важно для меня. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Burn uh, that you gave me this chance once again. That's really important for me, so that's why we really, really want to thank you. И хочу извиниться за то, что не оправдал надежды и в этот раз, наверное, чудо не на моей стороне сегодня тоже. И, конечно, спасибо всем за поддержку, кто болел за меня. Спасибо моему спонсору Ашоту Мартиновичу за поддержку и спасибо моему тренеру и перед ним тоже извиняюсь за то, что мы столько тренировались, готовились и вышло не так, как нужно. Вроде все делаем правильно, но чего-то не хватает, наверное, чего-то духовного. Опять спасибо всем, кто принимал участие в моей подготовке. I've been um, a fan of mixed martial arts for a lot of years, so the opportunity to have Houston and uh, Vladimir fight on the same show against each other here at Bellator was uh, uh, was exciting for me. It was fun to see. Uh, Vladimir, congratulations on a big win, first win here at Bellator. But uh, it was fun to see you guys. Well, well thanks a, a lot. That was picture. a lot of fun. <laughs> It was a surprising fight actually for me too. It's uh, you know kind of vice versa. I saw some of his fights and video, and he was kicking guys down to the leg until they go down. I'm like, hey, I may kick him too, and he trying to take me down. <laughs> but it was fun. Actually, it was a, a good proof for me to go not just to win, but also go all three five minute rounds and. Uh, Actually, I have a lot of questions for me before fight. Are you are you still in shape? Are you old? Like <laughs> like I'm a grandfather. <laughs> but actually, Houston is my age, and uh, we just proved, you know, both of us that we, you know, old timers still capable of do some things. Absolutely. We can still, you know, jump through the hoops. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Vladdy, I don't know about the old crap. You, you can keep that old crap to yourself. <laughs> First of all, you know, hey, I'm gonna be long-winded because you know I do radio. I'm just, I'm just sandbagging, you know. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm kind of long-winded, everybody. So, how's everybody doing out there today? Did you enjoy the fights out there? First of all, I'd like to thank the organization Bellator for having me in, uh, at a, as a back home in the Nebraska, Iowa area who support me 100% Nebraska. when everybody else, when, every, when everybody else is just kind of sitting around not worried about Nebraska or Iowa because we got great MMA out there, period, to the great state of California. Even though you guys are going to you lose to lose uh, uh, to Nebraska tomorrow, <laughs> UCLA, sorry. <laughs> Love you, but <laughs> but uh, if won't be not you, I won't get paid. That's what, how yeah, it goes. Yeah. Like you kind of hate your opponent in a way, but sometimes you have to shake hands, and otherwise you're not gonna. But well, much my, much respect to all the fighters tonight. You know, I, again, I learn on on a regular basis, and we appreciate Bellator having us. 
the fighters, the media. We appreciate everything from you guys, so thank you very much. You're welcome. The number one prospect in the world of 155 uh, last year and came into this organization, unfortunately, in his first fight in the Bellator cage, ran into Frodo Kospolayev. Um, one of the toughest fighters. He was an unknown when he came to Bellator, but I believe he's one of the top 10, 145 pounders in the world. Lost that fight, learned from it, and in a fight tonight against a gentleman who will be back in this organization fighting in short order, a very talented featherweight fighter in Des, um, pulled off a great win tonight. So you're going to see both of these guys back in the organization. It just so happens tonight you're going to see one of them move forward in this featherweight tournament. But congratulations on the big win. Bem, eu só tenho a agradecer mais uma vez a oportunidade. É, hoje me sinto feliz de estar sentando desse lado da mesa. Passou um filme agora na, cabe na minha cabeça quando eu estreiei e sentei do lado de lá. É, agora é focar no próximo desafio e eu tenho certeza que vai ser guerra. Lutei contra um cara do wrestling e vou lutar com o um Strike agora. Então o jogo vai ser totalmente diferente, vocês vão ver um excelente combate com certeza. First of all, I'd like to say that I came here very prepared to fight this guy. He's an amazing wrestler. Um, I look forward for my next fight. The guy is going to be also a striker and um, I will train very hard for that. And there's a lot of stuff that went through my mind when I was here today. And now we're going to focus for the next fight now. Uh, first off, I want to thank Bellator for giving me this opportunity, you know, me being so young in the sport, letting me in this tournament. Um, really pissed that I lost. I hate to lose, and um, I have a bad taste in my mouth to let me back in the tournament. So uh, just looking forward to that, Fabrizio, the fight. And um, next time I get in there, I know I'm going to have to do a little bit more to win. We, uh, we're blessed here at Bellator at 145 pounds. We got some of the greatest fighters on the face of the earth. And if you watched our premiere on Spike last January, you saw this gentleman go toe to toe in one of the best fights we've ever put in the cage against Pat Curran. Um, I, I've said it many times, I'm pretty open about saying it. Uh, I think if everybody in the world started fighting at 145 pounds, Jose Aldo and Pat Curran would be the last two guys standing. I think the third guy standing would be the gentleman to my left. Um, he is an incredibly talented fighter, and I think you saw it on display today. Um, the gentleman that he beat today is a, is a spectacular top-tier, world-class 145-pounder, and he finished him early in the first round. So I think you're looking at one of the best 145-pounders we've got in our entire sport. Um, great guy to have in the organization, just a ball of energy and a spectacular representative of everything that is Bellator in Brazil. And uh, I just can't wait to see him take his next step. He is just electrifying to watch in the cage. So congratulations, Patricio Pitbull. Oh, yeah. Primeiro, agradeço o Bellator por ter me trazido mais uma vez. E quero dizer que estou muito feliz na melhor fase da minha vida. First, I'd like to thank Bellator um, for all the support. And I'm very happy I've been in the best phase of my life. Eu vim pro Bellator e vou cravar meu nome na história do MMA dentro do Bellator. Eu vou crescer junto com o evento, que já é uma, a maior organização, da, pelo menos dentro da minha categoria. E isso me faz muito feliz de ser o maior lutador do meia dentro do Bellator. I came to Bellator to stay. I'm going to put a, a plaque on the Bellator of my name. Um, prove everybody that I came here to stay. I'm very, very happy. And, um, that's how it's going to think it's going to be. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. And for those members of the press that have questions, we'll go ahead and open it up. For those questions, for those just joining us on the street, we welcome you to uh, Pachanga Resort and Casino. A uh, show of hands, please, for the members of the press who have questions. Okay, excellent. We'll start uh, right here in the front row. Thank you. Jonathan King from theclinchreport.com. Uh, First of all, gentlemen, great fight. All the fighters, thank you very much for putting on a great fight. I'm glad everybody's healthy. Um, first question is, uh, 
for Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn, with Vlad's win, does this put him on the short list of 205 contenders for the next tournament? Um, if so, who else will be considered? Um, you know, two of, it's funny, Sam Kaplan and Zach Light and our talent development team have done an amazing job for us at 205. Um, you look back a year and a half ago, and 205 and 265 were weak links for us. But now you look at it, it's Rampage, and it's Tito, and it's Kingmo, and it's Zayats, and it's Vlad, and the list goes on and on. It's got some deep vague, obviously, up top. you got some deep, deep fighters for us at 205. So um, he's on that short list. I mean, he's on that short list, and perhaps we do a format. I've loved the way the formats have played out to date. Um, it gets us there quicker. It still stays true to the tournament format and the objectivity. So if we've got a four-man coming up in, in January, February, yeah, he'd be on the short list for sure. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Patrizio, going into the fight, uh, it seemed like that you were um, game planning to kill the world before he came off the books. So I love the depth we've got at 45, 35, down to five, six players in the space. And there's just two of us left, but it speaks to the depth. You know, you get that fight in the first round of a tournament. I mean, I've been watching Diego fight for a long time. I've seen him get fighted the night after fight. Uh, my name's Mark Montez. I'm from WSMFights.com. Uh, Baby Joe's, congrats on the win. Uh, can you just explain how you were able to neutralize um, Justin Fisher, Andrew Fisher, that, that Andrew Fisher's uh, reach, and just talk about uh, what your game plan overall was going into that match, and um, anything else that you've I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the fight uh, speaks for itself. I mean, he was, you know, his stand-up is uh, second to none. The kid's uh, really tough, you know, but, you know, I'm a wrestler, and, and that's why we keep the wrestling in the Olympics is because it, it develops guys like me, you know. Tough nose, grind, go to the end. Hey, congrats. Uh, this question's for ACOP. ACOP, can you just talk about, was it at all frustrating to maybe get a different opponent a couple days before? I mean, there's circumstances you can't control, and that's understandable, but... Do you want to talk about maybe what it's like to prepare for somebody else and then get another opponent in the ring? Day of the fight. На самом деле это сыграло большую роль, потому что Шарбула Шамхалаев ударник, и мы с тренером подстраивались под ударника и больше работали именно на эту тактику. И думаю, что это сыграло свою роль, но Все-таки вся ошибка в том, что я не должен был давать там этой позиции. И... Значит, так надо. Uh, it was hard for me because I prepared with my uh, coach for the wrestler, for the uh, for the striker, for Shabla Shabalaev. But uh, I totally agree with my mistake. I um, didn't want to uh, go from the back, so it's my mistake. And uh, good job, Justin. One last question. Uh, this question is for Des Green. Hey, Des, at, at, when they gave the decision, you looked a little shocked, like you thought you might have won. If that was the case, can you just talk about why you felt like you might have won that decision, if anything? Um, yeah, well, I knew I lost the second round because, you know, I gave up the takedown here on my back. And um, I knew I won the third round because, you know, I had his back and I took him down, I think, twice. And the first round, you know, I, I thought I did enough to, you know, get a takedown. I we, we, he, we both were striking, but I thought that takedown at the end of the first round was enough to seal it up. So, um, but, you know, I'm a wrestler, and uh, my coach is always telling me don't leave it in a rough hand. So, at the end of the day, I, next time I'm out there, I just got to do enough to make sure I get that win. Thanks. I like that green. David Kano, Hollywood MMA show, and he said that you guys have the best 145 pounders in the world. What is it about the 145ers that brings them to Bellator particularly? You know, I um, I think it's just the the recruiting that our talent development team does. Um, you know, Pat Kern was Pat Kern was an anomaly. Pat Kern, we were in Chicago at the time as a company. Jeff Kern just kept calling the office and saying, "You got to give this kid a chance." And he came in at 55 and um, made it all the way to a world title fight against Alvarez, who was our champ at the time in 55, and then bounced down to 45, and it's just been unstoppable. I mean, that's been the, the maturation, the cover of Fight Magazine, all the stuff that's happened for Pat. Um, you know, the, the guy to my left came to us out of an email that somebody sent me and said, dude, check this out. And I took two looks at it, and I called Sam, I think, at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I said, you need to get on a flight to Brazil. And uh, it just keeps coming like that. It's just about the recruiting process. And we used to do a lot of throwing, and now we do more catching. 
because there's so many world-class fighters from whether it's Brazil or Russia or Western Europe or you know South Central America, etc., that come to this organization. So, um, you know, it, it's also and I'll shut up, but it's also about what makes us different. You know what I mean? It's also about it, it doesn't matter here if you want a reality show. It doesn't matter here um, if you've got really good hair, really crappy hair. It doesn't matter if you're married to a supermodel. What matters is if you win. <laughs> And it's a really good process. That's what I like about Bellator. Thanks, brother. It's a really good maturation process to, develop, to, to take guys from nowhere to the top of the world in very short order. Because there's no golden boys. There's no hand-picked people that get to Hell fight, yeah. fight because they're very charismatic and can talk their way into something. So um, it's just a process where the cream rises to the top. I mean, we see it in football, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, golf, tennis, every other sport on earth except for other combat sports organizations. So... I think that plays into it too, and you know it doesn't hurt that there's just two of us left at this point, and you know you get you get to get guys on short notice like Justin Wilcox and people like that who a year and a half, two years ago would have been top ranked in a tournament. So I mean, just it's it's all those pieces coming together. But man, it's cool to see Kate side and see it come together. Hell yeah. Camaraderie ship. You know, you guys are hanging out. Afterward, in boxing is not the same way. Can you guys talk about the difference between MMA, mixed martial artists, and boxers? The mentality that goes into it, and why there's more respect in MMA? You know, I think I think MMA is different because there there's a there's there's a respect aspect to the game. You know, a lot of the fighters respect each other. If you don't have any type of animosity towards the person. You're actually fighting. There, there's a lot of respect in the game, whether it be from the 145 pounders up into the, the the heavyweights. Everyone respects the game, and you and you should respect the game. There, there's no, there's no in between unless you have real animosity against some guy you was probably in the gym with, and you guys have beef. There should be no animosity in MMA, out of the respect aspect, and that's that. That's how I feel. Martial arts. Back there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for a microphone. And uh, what's the question? Was it boxers? Why do you think that is? Well, first of all, there's a lot of more. When in my preparation right now, I want to come out healthy. That's actually pretty freaking hard sometimes. And you see, like this guy, you know, just been last minute to call because, or somebody else because, and my opponent, the original opponent, got hurt. So. In boxing, you just, you know, hit in the head, you wear a headgear, that's all it is. Nobody gonna crack your knees or tweaks your ankle and stuff like that, or broke your ribs. So there's a lot of more danger in there, and you have to pick you, who you train with very carefully. And, you know, sorry guys, but all the guys who I train with, I hate them, but I love them. <laughs> when you train, like, seriously, I'm like, I'm gonna kill your ass, but, but they, you need them. That's why you kind of de develop not just a team, but also family. And my final question is for Bjorn and anyone else. You know, there's a huge tomorrow, the Mayweather-Canelo fight. And I wrote an article that said, I think this will be the last big fight. I think MMA has taken over. Dan Rayfield from ESPN said he disagrees and said that boxing is not dead. Can you talk about what is your opinion on... I, I really believe that MMA has taken over and boxing will be gone. What, what, are, what are you guys' thoughts, Bjorn, and then anyone else? Thank you. Well... That's a that's a big question. Um, I think I think that MMA's prevalence right now, objectivity speaks and numbers don't lie. And ratings in mixed martial arts far surpass ratings in boxing. There is no real ratings mechanism in boxing anymore because boxing doesn't have a home per se, other than what ESPN2 does on a Friday night basis for consistency of mixed mar of, uh, of boxing programming. And MMA does obviously. Fox is supporting it to a large extent through their relationship with the UFC and Viacom supports it through their relationship with us on Spike. Um, so we get a consistent role of ratings which beat boxing ratings very handedly. Um, attendance at live events on a consistent basis beat boxing very handedly. Um, international distribution of events beats boxing very handedly. Sponsorship dwarfs boxing. I mean the sponsorship you see inside of our cage with the David Busters of the world and the Victory and the Miller Light and the like. Um, is a it, it, there's no comparison to what is supporting boxing and also it's fed by a demographic of young predominantly male consumers where boxing is is fed by a socioeconomically depressed 
group of consumers that skew much older. I don't mean to get like too hyper technical with you, but the bottom line is the bottom line is this. Sorry, um, went into hardcore sponsorship pitch for the first second. Um, the reality of it is this: boxing is all geared toward one mega event, and boxing feeds itself through a right. form I agree. where guys are where the entirety of the sport is reliant upon guys winning 22, 25, 32 fights before they're right. considered to be real fighters. Right. And if you look up at this table, there's a lot of guys with a lot of L's behind their name when right. you look at the, the wins and the losses, and yet they're still spectacularly talented world-class fighters. What a speaker. He just lost to Pat Curran a couple, three fights ago. That doesn't mean he's not one of the greatest featherweights in mixed martial arts, and we accept that in MMA. You look at Randy Couture's record, and if you looked at that record in boxing, he would be an opponent playing in the Midwest circuit, and yet he was one of the greatest mixed martial artists we've ever had in the game. So there's a substantive reality to what we do in, in, in MMA that boxing just doesn't have. And boxing plays to the one huge event that comes around once a year or once every 18 months, whereas MMA can consistently fuel the machine because it's true sports competition. So. I mean, that, that's a long answer to a short question, but right. I think that's a problematic aspect for boxing as it tr continues to try to survive as a viable sport because you can't survive on one 1.75 million pay-per-view mega event every 15 months. It just doesn't work. It doesn't make for a viable business. There we go. And for those media members, we thank you for your question. That's how you explain it. Norm, we'll I love it. Boxing is part of mixed martial arts, as we know. Until MMA fighters are making the same as boxers, then we can compare MMA and boxing. That, that's, that's the bottom, you know, and there's no disrespect to MMA. We have some of the top fighters in the world. We have some of the best sponsors in the world. Why can't fighters get some of the best pay in the world? True. That's the, that's, that's the bottom line. Why, why, why can't our champions get the same amount as the champions of boxing? Why do we have to leave with, with pennies when boxers are getting, leaving with $29, $40 million in one night for their champions? Consider that. If, we want, if MMA wants to climb that ladder, because boxing is over 100 years old, bottom line, and it's still part of mixed martial arts, whether we like it or not. So much respect to boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, grappling, all the mixed martial arts. But why are we getting pennies when it, when when boxers are getting millions? And we we and we are the future. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Houston, thank you. And uh, again, for the members of the media, sitting to my left, big wins tonight. Incredible show. You'll see. Uh, Baby Joe versus Justin. You'll see Fabricio versus Patricio. Wichita, uh, Wichita, Kansas Star, October 11th. Should be a spectacular, spectacular show and great event. And another big thank you to our partners here at Chang and to our partners at Spike. Our next five members will be from tonight in Phoenix.